Hello there, Codemaker4 here. So today we're talking about arbitration logic. Uh, what is arbitration logic? Well, say, hypothetical scenario, we have this notification system. And like, the Toadpot head will kind of pay a sound whenever a notification happens. Very simple. One problem is that if there's multiple notifications at the same time, all of the Toadpot heads will make a sound at the same time. This might be undesirable. So we can use arbitration logic to make sure that only one Toadpot head will uh, make a sound at the same time. So there will never be two notifications being making sound at the same time. Arbitration logic. This sounds like it's some very specific scenario, but there's actually like real world uses for this. Say we have a computer system where there's like multiple components making use of the same memory or some same uh, communication bus. Then we need arbitration logic to make sure that uh, there's not going to be any conflict. And for that, I made this simple arbitration module. It's uh, these six gates over here. Uh, let's see how it works. The idea is that you hook up multiple of these in a cycle, um, but over here I have only one hooked up with just a few bit, like dummy things on the side. Um, so you take the previous thing's uh, output and put it in these two gates, and take the output and put it into the next two gates, like this. And the idea is that a uh, one tick pulse is going to be going through here in a cycle. So I'm just going to kind of press this button every time a one tick pulse is going through. And that Toadbot head is going to kind of give a sound every time it's going to the next thing. So as you can see, like this would now kind of go on looping in a cycle. So say this component over here wants to make use of a shared resource. Um, it should send a one tick pulse to this self wired extra gate to kind of turn it on. What's going to happen is that next time we get an input pulse, it's not going to go on to the next thing. Instead, it's going to trigger this gate instead. So this gate turned on very briefly. This means that this component can now make use of the shared resource. And once it's done, it should send a one tick pulse uh, back to the output gate to kind of let the cycle continue again. Very simple. Let's use this in a practical example, like the notification system. So we need three of these, one for each um, kind of module. Uh, let's let me quickly like do this in a neat way. Two seconds, please. All right. So instead of this um, pulse going directly to the logic of actually handling the notification, uh, we're going to do it via the arbitrators. So how do we hook up the arbitrators? First of all, we need to quickly make the cycle. So uh, we make all of the two connections. Um, for reasons, it kind of all starts being turned on. So we need to do two things in preparation. First, we need to kind of turn it off by giving a dummy input to one of the AND gates. And second thing we need to do is we need to give a one tick pulse to one of the OR gates to kind of start the cycle. All right, that gets the cycle going. Uh, next up, every time you press the button, we need to kind of say that uh, we want to make use of a shared resource by giving a one tick pulse to the white gate. And once the arbitrator says that it's kind of that component's turn to make use of the shared resource, we get a, a one tick pulse out of this dark cyan gate. So we're going to do the thing that we uh, did before, send a, a pulse to both the self and extra gate and the timer of each uh, uh, toadpot head. And once we're done, we should send a pulse back to the OR gate. So that's uh, when the timer gives an output to kind of let the cycle start up again. So let's see how this works. Ta-da! Works flawlessly. Well, there's a few disadvantages to using this system. Specifically, it like relies on this one-tick pulse loop to kind of give turns to each of the arbitration logic modules. This does mean that it is very expandable, like you can make this cycle as long as you want. However, disadvantage is that uh, if this one-tick pulse gets lost because of the logic resets, um, this breaks. So every time a logic reset happens, you need to give the one-tick pulse back 
um, which can become funky if we're talking about world reset and the first time you load a creation on the lift. Um, because then, like, logic kind of loads in a funky way. Um, the second thing, of course, this will be slow if you're if you're using very large loops. So this doesn't really work on very large scales. Um, I have been trying to make a kind of uh, instant version of this that doesn't make use of a cycle. But I kind of kept running into issues where if you send pulses, like if you send inputs like, right with the right timings, like one kind of module ends right as another is requesting, then it will lead to edge cases where like either two things happen at the same time or nothing ends up happening and it will wait forever. Uh, we don't want that to happen. Um, so blueprint can be found in the description. Uh, I'm code maker four. I still don't really have an author yet, so um, bye, I guess. Oh yeah, I forgot. Please subscribe.